Fire officials around the state want decision makers to experience their line of work. So today they attended a class called Fire Ops 101 to find out what firefighters face on a daily basis. It was a chance for public officials to get a glimpse into what it's like to be a professional firefighter in Connecticut. It's Firefighting 101. The flames are real and so is the smoke. I'm Jody Latina in Hartford. I'll tell you why they're doing this coming up. Fire Ops 101 is a program that's designed by the International Association of Firefighters. It's been done throughout the country. The purpose of it is to educate the various local elected leaders as well as state and federal leaders about what we do as a profession of firefighting, how difficult it is, the kind of pressure we go through doing our job day to day, the equipment we use, what we need for equipment, what we need for personnel and staffing, um, some of the difficulties that we face not only in the job, but just with what we're lacking as far as support and resources that we get usually from our local level, but sometimes even from the state and federal level. At the Hartford Fire Training Center, we're gonna run through three major scenarios, which is a structure fire, a motor vehicle accident with extrication and injuries, and an EMS scenario where someone's having a full cardiac arrest. So we hope to get them here that day, run them through these scenarios and get them educated about our profession, how dangerous it is, what we need for their support down the road. We feel that you'll leave here today, hopefully with a better understanding of what firefighters do on a daily basis. So again, thank you very much. Today we're gonna to have six legislators and three members of the media that will learn firsthand the true meaning of public safety, the true meaning of putting a life on the line for our citizens. The reality is some departments in the state run new structure fire with as little as eight guys. Total. So I want you to keep that in perspective. Also, this is a very dangerous job. Something I tell recruit firefighters when we start is I say, if you're a firefighter long enough, you're going to get hurt. You're not going to get hurt today. The building's not going to collapse on you today. So though you're going to get a taste of what it's like for a fire operation, it's just a taste. Because those other dynamic parts of those situations, somebody yelling, my kid's trapped on the second floor, aren't going to be there today. At this point, we're going to move downstairs now. You guys can start to get your gear on. I ask you to put your pants and boots on and then go over to the rehab bus and have your uh, vitals taken. Thank you, Mr. What we're going to demonstrate to you here is what is basically 60% of what a firefighter does to respond to EMS calls. The chance of survival from cardiac arrest without fire department response with an AED is definitely zero. Clear? He clears everybody? He pushes the button and he just delivered a shock to that person. The EMTs are usually the first ones to show up and they're going to do basic life support until a paramedic shows up. He's going to do advanced life support and so then we're going to grab you and pull you in. Wait. Like you and then you to rush. Rush. Okay. Hold one it. pressure. One squeeze. Yeah. Try to use Let a little it go. more heel in your hand. One and it'll fit nice as you put your jacket on over. I work for Senator Chris Dodd, I'm his Director of Community Affairs, and unfortunately he was unable to be here today, he's in Washington, but he wanted me to come and learn how we on the federal level can be helpful. I'd say it's been a great morning, I'm really glad I came. What we simulated was a motor vehicle accident with an occupant trapped inside the vehicle. Number one thing that I'm worried about is types of bloodborne pathogens we may encounter. So we need to make sure that our firefighters are bundled up with as much personal protective equipment as possible. I am looking forward to seeing what the experience is like. That's what today is all about. And certainly as a co-chair of the Public Safety Committee, I think it's important for us to have some exposure to what people are doing every day when they put their lives on the line to protect us. So far I did the first operation, which is cutting a hole in the roof of a building. I was really challenged physically to carry that saw while on a roof and you have about 40 pounds of clothing on 
my heart was beating and I thought, wow, these people have to be in really good physical shape. A lot of the legislators got to know what it was like to hold uh, hand tools, saws, to feel the heat on the second floor of the burn building, to sweat, and to realize, you know, you need to take care of yourself, be physically fit. What's that? I guess. Going in there gave me a great new perspective on, uh, and appreciation for the work that our firefighters do. It was amazing. You have to rely on your senses an awful lot. You need to feel around and, and get a sense of your surroundings. I didn't understand that you really can't see anything. It's an eye-opening experience. I mean, you get winded very quickly. We're on public safety. You hear people talk about 20 years in retirement or 25. And you understand it intellectually. But until you do something like this, you don't understand it physically. It's a really interesting experience. I'm going to tell the others they ought to try it next year. I may not try it next year, but they can try it. Well, it exceeded my expectations, let me tell you. It, uh, it gives you a whole new perspective on what these uh, professionals do. It also gives us a much more informed perspective on the legislation that we consider at the state capitol. I learned a lot. I'm glad I did it. So thank you so much. We'll continue to work on your behalf. There's, as you know, there's more work to be done at the capitol. Today has been just an ideal day, perfect day, and fortunately it's just training. Today the buzzword is, for politicians, we want people to do more with less. And sometimes you just can't do that in the business that we're in. We need more people. Uh, we need more training. To understand the importance of funding your first responders, it is very imperative to give them the proper monies that they need to protect the lives of the individuals that they represent within their local communities. I hope you as a legislator find that this was interesting to you and that you're available to come to a fire ops program. We really want to educate you on what we do as firefighters, how dangerous our profession is, why we need the support that we ask for on a day-to-day -day basis from you up at the State House. I think we'd like to make this an ongoing pro program as long as there's an interest up at the legislature. Please talk to the people that were able to make it and get their feelings on if they have a different realization of what our job really consists of. These are not extraordinary events. They're the average daily life of a paid professional firefighter. The most important point we're making is that you're dealing with people's lives.